Network. This is a Word Network special presentation. This is a Word Network special presentation. It's the Craig Davis Show. Thank you for joining us today as we're live in studio with Bishop Greg Davis. Welcome, and you are watching the Bishop Greg Davis, the Greg Davis Show live. And right, this is not Greg Davis. <laughs> I have a bald head like Greg Davis, but I'm not Greg Davis. I'm Lester Love of the City of Love in New Orleans, Louisiana. We are here at the Full Gospel Baptist Church Fellowship Annual Conference, the 25th year in Columbus, Ohio, the place of the Great Awakening. And I am honored today to reverse roles. Normally, Bishop Greg Davis is sitting here and somebody else is sitting there, but guess what? Now, I'm sitting here as a host and I am interviewing Bishop Greg Davis. This feels so odd. <laughs> this is awkward. You're sitting in the other chair today. I know it. This was your idea and it was a very good idea. Thank you so much. The reason we wanted to do this, Bishop, because you have such a great story. And, and I, we want all the tea. We want all the tea. We want all of it. <laughs> Because people look it's at you Christian now. Network, huh? Oh, okay, I'm sorry. <laughs> people look at you now, and you look great, 56 years old, eyes bright, skin clear. But people don't know there's a background story to get to this place. So before we talk about Full Gospel and the conference and your role as a founding father, um, you've been through some stuff in your life from almost from birth. From birth. I know you've told the story before, but Bishop... Tell us how even challenging it was for you to get here. Uh, my mother, well, first of all, thank you for, for doing this. And uh, I'm, I'm honored to even sit on the other side of, and you do this well too, by the way. He does it every day, y'all. Um, my mother was um, half Italian, Sicilian, and uh, Creole. I don't think you knew about the Creole part. I didn't know about the Italian part. That's why no, you dressed like yeah, that. Yeah, my, my, my grandmother was uh, uh, Creole. My grandfather was Sicilian. And um, so her, my mother's last name was Cagnoletti. And had my dad not permitted my mother to use Davis, I'd have been Gregory Cagnoletti. I was gonna so I'd have been preaching you. in all of I'm the- I was start calling you that. Cagnoletti. Cago. Cag <laughs> <laughs> um, my mother tried to get rid of me. She had gotten rid of two. I was only child. She had gotten rid of two other children. And she said that when she tried to get rid of me, um, she literally pulled them out with a clothes hanger. Mm. And- um, when it got to me, she said, you were too, she used some words uh, with a D, uh, <laughs> stubborn, and you wouldn't come out. And only to learn that because of the purpose of God that was on my life. The first preach I ever heard was on a Sunday morning when WLBS in New York, I grew up in Manhattan, 55th and 8th Avenue, Wesley apartment. My mm -hmm. stepdad was Sam of Sam and Dave. I'm a soul man. Hold on, I'm coming. Come on. No, it was a common law husband for seven years. Um, I watched him, he's still living. I've talked to him a couple of times to thank him. I watched him in his band. He talks about it, he had an addiction of uh, heroin, shoot up in the bathroom. My mother would take pills, try to commit suicide. So that's suicide. the environment you were that's raised in? That's the environment in. I was raised in. I had my first job when I was seven years old, worked at the delicatessen across the street, owned by a black man in 1969. So you're a black man that's Italian, and now you work with a a black man that does something Italian. Yes, yes, owns a store. Yeah, I watched the pimps literally outside my window at a bar across the street with their big hats like the Superfly movie. I grew up in that environment, had sex. I'm gonna say this, because yeah. you need to, I had sex when I was seven years old uh -huh. with a young lady by name. <laughs> you say, uh -huh. uh -huh. I'm, so I'm learning so much, I'm learning all so much. My name was Maria. Uh-huh, don't get uh, my Maria. last name. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so I, I grew up in that environment. My father, I had not seen him but maybe one or two times, and then Billy Davis still living, he turned 80 years old this year, um, asked my mom this, said, if he stays in this environment, he's probably gonna die in the streets. Asked my mom, said, can, you take, can I take him and let my parents raise him? She said, yes. Greatest thing my mother and father ever did for me in life. Yeah. Moved to Detroit only to meet Reverend Ananias Davis. That's the one right there and First Lady Jenny Davis. How did you meet them? Um, my mother went to visit my dad in Detroit some years before that, 
And she went out and partied and I stayed with them. I cried all night long. Yeah. And so there was something in me that was at ease when my father asked that. It was like, I was okay with it. Yeah. I got there. My auntie was raised with me like a sister that was their child. They only had two children. And when I got there, I was comfortable at nine years old at church. I started going to church immediately because whatever I did, I put my whole heart into yeah. it. I received Jesus Christ as Lord. I became assistant superintendent at nine and a half years old. And I've known church. I've been everything from a nurse to a driver to to everything in church. When my grandfather needed a nurse and I didn't think they were doing good, right. I went and bought a nurse uniform. Uh, I directed the choir. Couldn't sing the lick, but I directed the choir. <laughs> right. Um, I was a junior deacon. You directed deacon. the choir even now. Uh, right, I was a junior deacon. I, I did it all in my grandfather's church. I served my grandfather. I always say my grandfather, Reverend Ananias Davis, planted me. Mm -hmm. uh, Bishop Morton watered me. Yeah. And God gave the increase. Those two men saved my life. But it's also connected to the real reason why you're still alive, what other people call stubborn. We would call resiliency. Yeah. We would call stick to itiveness. Yeah. That no matter what you go through, Bishop, and you've gone through a lot from not even supposed to be here to all these bad environments, you, you, now you start pastoring a church after being with your grandfather, uh, and then you get married. But then there's some tragedy that begin to happen even then. Yeah. In your marriage. Uh, my, let, me, let me just digress. My, my mother died when I was 19 years old. Mm -hmm. One of her, um, one of her Johns called and said, mm. hey, you're Gregory? I said, yeah. Your mama's dead. She died at the house here. I had to get on the bu bus with a good friend of mine. And how old were you? I was 19, just had graduated. She never saw me preach. She never saw me on TV. I how went does that later. make you feel that she never saw that? Um... You know, it, it, I have mixed feelings because I would have liked to at least let her know that all that she went through with me, yeah. it was worth it. Yeah. Um, my dad, see, he, you know, of course he's seen it, mm -hmm. but I had to go and identify my mother, couldn't bury her. She had to be buried across um, upstate New York. My friend named Butch, who's who part of my church now, he drove the, he rode the Greyhound with me to go see about my mother. Come and. On. Make sure they're sure. So I've been through a lot. Back to what you said. Pastor Kim Davis, we're good friends. Yeah, we, yeah. We helped now, build the you, fellowship. Now, that's very rare mm -hmm. in, in the African-American community that you can go through a divorce and still be friends. Yeah. We'll be here this week. And everybody will be sitting looking like, really? You know, she's dating somebody else and, and all that. But I got married. We, built, we helped build ministries. Yes. We helped build kids. We helped build this fellowship. Did you? And we both, she worked for me. Bishop said, hey, you keep on firing all these assistants, so I'm going to get one that you ain't going to fire. Uh -huh. Pastor Kim going to be your assistant. Right. We literally were full-time with the fellowship. Right. Um, then the Word Network happened, television. She had an opportunity, a great moment to preach in this fellowship that propelled her ministry. Oh, when the dust settles. When the dust settles. <laughs> everybody still remembers. When remember. the dust settles. Right. Yeah. We raised spiritual children. Some of them are sitting out there and... I would go home, was living in three places. I had an apartment in Delaware. I had a house in Philly. I had a loft in Detroit. And I'd go home on Saturdays and we had nothing to talk about. Man. Because we built everything and everybody else up and we had nothing. Mm. There was no, we grew apart. Literally, we pushed each other to get to destiny. And then we didn't have nothing. Just giving to everybody. Giving, giving to, to everybody, everybody else, spiritual everybody. children, our children, raising our children, uh, helping with full gospel, helping build churches. And even in that, we took over church and we were then asked to leave the church. We went through a lot together, but we understand now that that was the reason we were together, mm -hmm. to build each other up, to get each other ready. And so we're best of friends. I just preached for the two churches that I handed over to her. Wow. Uh, Ebenezer and um, the River. She's the pastor of both of those churches. I go back on Father's Day. They honor me. Wow. She, and, and the day we announced to our churches that we were divorcing, uh, she said, don't none of you all talk about him. That's because cool. Bishop Gregory Michael Davis remains my hero. And Come she on. says that to this day. Bishop, you're a lot of people's heroes. A lot of people that watch you every day. 
Um, you encourage us. You pour into us because you're always helping somebody. And you talked about this fellowship, and we were going to take a break in just a minute. Um, but you, you talk about this, this fellowship. I'm, I'm watching you every day. <laughs> I'm watching you every day. Wow, you let me know it's almost break time. That's good. Yeah. <laughs> Um, hey, I won't be back tomorrow. Just don't get rid of now. <laughs> but I want you to tell us about the fellowship, and then you're doing something in your life, and I see a freshness on you. Um, that's called celebration. And we're gonna talk about that. Um, we're talking about the fellowship now. No, no, we're we gonna talk after the break. I just, oh, I, just, oh, okay. I gave you a cue. We having okay, a break. Right. You're supposed to say we're going to break. <laughs> we'll be right back. <laughs> Uh, this is the Greg Davis Show. I'm Lester Love interviewing uh, Greg Davis, Bishop Greg Davis, one of the great leaders of this fellowship and a great man. He's got a great story about how he helped the fellowship. And now in the second half of his life that he's doing something now that has given him such a newness and such a refreshing. We'll be right back. You're on the Word Network with Lester Love at the Greg Davis Show. Davis Ministries presents Let the Healing Begin, Miami, with Bishop Greg Davis, Sunday, July 15th at 7 p.m., held at North Miami Beach High School, 1247 Northeast 167th Street, North Miami Beach. Join Bishop Davis and his special musical guest, award-winning Bashawn Mitchell. Down deep in my soul, down deep in my soul. And leading praise and worship, Pastor Damian Archad. That's Sunday, July 15th at 7 p.m. Come expecting healing in every area of your life with Bishop Greg Davis and musical guest Bishon Mitchell, held at North Miami Beach High School, 1247 Northeast 167th Street, North Miami Beach. Let the healing begin. And we're back here on the Greg Davis Show. And again, no, this is not Greg Davis. This is Bishop Lester Love. And we're at the Full Gospel Baptist Church Fellowship Conference, the 25th year. And if anybody wants any information about Full Gospel, just go straight to fullgospelconference.org. You'll be able to get, be able to get all the information right there. Great preachers, great singers. It's going to be an incredible week. Started from the bottom, now we're here. Uh, Bishop Morton started this 26 years ago, actually. Took a year to build the foundation, and now we're 25 years. We're in Columbus, Ohio, the place of the Great Awakening, and we're interviewing one of our founding fathers, a man that I saw years ago at Bishop Otis Floyd's consecration come in with a big, beautiful polka dot black and white tie on. <laughs> Silk, silk tie, walking fast. <laughs> Bishop Greg Davis. Yes, sir. Um, here on the Word Network, Bishop, and now this is your second stint with the Word Network. Uh, you went through a transition. But, man, you just keep bouncing back from stuff. You know, I think, I think we get it from you just went through a health challenge that mm -hmm. you shared. I think we get it from our spiritual father. No matter what he went through, the loss of a granddaughter, uh, Hurricane Katrina, which we all went through mm -hmm. together. Cancer. Cancer. Right. Um, one thing at the publicly, literally lost his mind yeah. in front of the world right. as the presiding bishop right. on television. Let me tell you what I learned from that. Because I'm so private, Bishop. I'm a lot like you, private. Yeah, I am. We just keep it all to yeah. ourselves, yeah. right? Which is not a good trait no, to not. have. it's not. And when I went through with my situation and when I fell and got hurt and all of that, I wasn't going to tell anybody anything. Yeah. I was, was going to come back and preach a message entitled like it never even happened. But I told Bishop Morton that he said, tell your story. Tell your story. It's going to help a lot of people. So I started telling people, and it's helping people. But that's why we want to talk to you, Bishop, because you got a story from not even supposed to be here, all the stuff you've seen. You're supposed to be a stat, living on the street. Now you go through, and you get involved in ministry. You meet your grandfather who changed your life. Um, fast forward, you served in every area of ministry, started pastoring, built the ministry, built everybody else, went through a divorce, a public divorce. Uh, While on Rejoicing the Word on the Word Network, literally, I'm sitting here encouraging everybody else, and I'm going through divorce, and, and everybody knows us. I mean, Bishop shared with me, and I think, I think for me, one of the other things about failing at marriage was disappointing him. Yeah. Because he said to me, and I don't even know if he remember. he said, he said, next to me and co-pastor Morton, 
you all were the model couple. That's true. That's true. What happened? You all worked together. You did ministry together. Right. But what happens when the very thing you love kills your marriage? Literally, literally ministry because there was, here's the word, there was no balance. Yeah, no harmony. No harmony. We had no balance. Even when we went on vacation, we talked about church. The kids worked in the ministry. I remember us getting a house and it was two rooms and we made it an office. We made both rooms an office. So our offices were right next to each other. Bishop Morton gave us a suite in the headquarters and our right. offices was right, together. Right, right. We did every, there was no balance. So even when we sat down, we only talked about ministry. So I encourage couples that are watching this, don't let ministry kill your marriage. Yeah. It was never intended. You know, we were taught in growing up, it's ministry first. Right. And then God, fa ministry, God, ministry, ministry and then, then family. family. Right. That is not the truth. Right. I right. come to tell you, it is not the truth. It is God first. It is family. And then it's ministry. Right. Or you will, you will lose it. And now I can walk in churches and tell when pastors are not happy and uh, couples are not happy because I've been through that. And, you know, you put on a good facade for the saints. Oh, yeah, because we know how to do it. Oh, we're churchy. Yeah, praise but the Lord. You, you're sitting there unhappy. You're sitting there almost, almost dead. You do this together well, but when you go on vacation. But see, looking back on it retrospectively, seeing you now compared to then, I can see now that you weren't happy. Seeing Isn't you now, because you're happy now. You can see it in your eyes. You can see yeah. it in your movement. I can look back and say, you know what? And it, it wasn't that you were non-responsive. It's just the, the, the aura that you had, the darkness that you had over you because you were not happy. But now look at you now, man, 56 years old. You look better than you've ever looked before. You feel better than you had before. And because you've helped so many people. And I'm a living witness that one of the reasons that this fellowship is successful because you built it from the inside, from the ground up, as the bishop of field operations. <laughs> A position that me and Trotter have made up and took to bishop. Right. And he said, yeah. But you were the one letting Bishop know what's going on out here. How can we help these churches? You, they got, you got sons and daughters in this fellowship that you helped to make bishop. Yeah. How does that make you feel looking back on that now that you helped this fellowship become what it is? You know, all I wanted, Bishop, and Bishop Walker talked about this too. I don't think people realize, young pre preachers realize this, and I try to tell some of my sons and daughters that are here right now, that most of the time when you go after something and intentionally want it, you don't really get it. But if you come in it mm -hmm. to serve, I can't, all I wanted to do, first of all, the first thing I wanted is just to be a part of something where I belong. Right. Baptist has ostracized me in, in Detroit. We were full gospel. Pastor Dana was there. We were full gospel. Nobody was calling me. So I wanted to be somewhere I belong. So that was the first way. Mm -hmm. Then I fell in love with Bishop Morton. Yeah. You know, he'll make you feel in love. Then I wanted to serve him. I wanted to push. I believed in this thing. Right. Still do. I believe because he was so passionate. Man, Bishop could sell you peanuts on the street if he didn't do this. I mean, right. 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 I mean and so I believed in it. And I bought into, here's what I did. I bought into the vision. Yeah. I, 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 he, he'll make you buy into it. I bought into the vision and anything I could see, just like I did with my grandfather, where I could help and I could get out here and make it work, that's what I did. So when I look back now and see where we are yeah. and the longevity of it and to know that a lot of these young fellas, Johnny Withers just told me right. he was 19 years old. He was a little kid just running around. What can I do, Bishop Davis? And now he's the regional bishop right. sitting on the council, he's 40 some years old now. Right. And to see this next generation, people that I've recommended, probably over 60 bishops that's here, or 70 that I've, the majority of the bishops that's here. Bishop, again, man, this is who you are, I believe. Because my mind went back to Phoenix, Arizona. And we thank God for Bishop Alexis Thomas, yeah. great church in Phoenix, we miss yeah. him. But you mentioned earlier about me hosting Essence, and I've been hosting Essence now, this is probably my sixth year hosting the Gospel Fest. But you know the first time I ever hosted something before mm -hmm. was when you came to me and said, Bishop, we having something at, 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 the, at the conference. I want you to host it. And you told me no. Right. You was nervous. I was so scared. With your black suit on, you said no. No, <laughs> no you, you did. You, you told me no because I believe I am a doorman. A doorman opens doors yeah. for people to get to their destination yeah both ways 
They're either coming or they're going. They're going into transportation on the streets or they're going to their domicile where they live, where they're supposed to live. And I believe that's what I do for people. I open doors. That's what this vehicle of television. That's what I'm about to say, Bishop. It, this vehicle, he just gave me a bigger, a bigger platform to do it. I've always done it. Yeah. That's what I keep saying to young preachers. What you're doing on the backside of the desert, you just don't show up and do it here. I did this when there was no cameras. Right. Seven days of glory. Conferences. Seven that's why I'm, days that's of why glory. I'm out now. I don't want to do the people say, you should do a conference. I'm conference out. Right. When I look at this, I've done all that. You traveled with us. I did. On the road. And so I've always been a door opener. Now God has just given me a larger platform to push people. And 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 when I when I see people like Brian, Prophet Brian Khan and Manasseh Jordan and, and Bernard, all these people tell me, say, you put us on TV first. Right. You, I, you're the first. That just blows my mind because I wasn't trying to put nobody on TV first. I saw gifts. Yeah. Same thing I saw in you in Phoenix. Yeah. I saw a gift yeah. in you. And now you, 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 you hosting everything. You're on the radio and all. I mean, you just, yeah. <laughs> no, but you're a bishop, and I know a lot of people won't say it. They won't admit it. But in a lot of ways, man, you're our model. You're Thank our you, model, sir. a model of excellence, uh, not just physically. And physically, you look great. You always dress nice. You represent well. People love you when they see you. You can feel the energy uh, through the screen. You're interviewing young pastors that nobody would ever know. You're always saying, man, this is this guy. This guy can do this. This guy can help. Um, but I think that's the reason why now, even on the second half of your year of your life, because unless you live to be 112, you're in the second half, right? Yeah, I am. All right? Now it looks like you're experiencing the greatest amount of joy you have ever experienced because you've sown into other people, and now you're experiencing something better. But you know why? And Pastor Dana and I'm going to tell you, I tell him this on Sundays, I am at such a great place of peace. Yeah. Stuff that used to bother me and disturb me, they don't even know me. They'd be like, who is this? Uh -huh. Like in the 90s? Oh, I thought that you had to be hard on people. You used to get me. Right. Hey, Bishop, why are you so hard? Bishop right. uh, Ellis, used, right. hey, man, why you just, just. But now, they don't, the same people that I used to lead in the 90s at Second Unity, I'm at a different place of peace. She call, they call me with stuff and be like, okay, blah, blah. And they look at me like I'm, because I'm at peace with me. Yeah. I, I feel good about me. And when you feel good about you, and I'm not trying to be anybody, I'm happy with who I am. I don't know if I could be a young preacher now with social media and all that. I, I just don't, because you have to be so many people that you're really not. Right. I, I went through that phase where I used to give my grandfather a sermon and preach in front of the mirror and be him. Right. Then I went through the phase, one of the greatest preachers, not women preachers, but preachers, is Jackie McCullough. Right. I tried to preach like Jackie McCullough, and now I'm so happy right. in who I am. I'm at a place of peace, Bishop, and, and I'm not just, that's not just something I say. No, you can see it. It's, I, I it's, mean, all, so it's all over you. Do whatever you want to do. It's I all mean, over you. It's like people could be fighting around, man. I'm just like, <laughs> I, I'm serious. I'm at right. a place of peace. Bishop, we only got about five minutes. I want that to dedicate. That was good, Bishop. You let me know how much time we had Stop, left. Stop, man. God almighty. <laughs> Bishop Brissett, you trying to take the show. No, man. But I want to take these last four and a half minutes. Oh! <laughs> you keep saying it. We, we, we ain't going to have nothing right. left. Come on. To tell us about the Celebration Church. Man, let me tell you something. I went and sat for six years almost at, I called Bishop Moore and I said, I need a local pastor. And I tried out a few places because I, I just believe in being submitted to somebody. I'm 57 right. years old, but I still believe in submission. Right. The best thing I did was to go sit under Pastor Solomon Kenlock That was Jr. six years? Yeah, I probably said about, four, yeah, at least six years. Jesus. Yeah, I ain't pastored in a while. Uh huh. And so I, um, yeah, six years. Because wow. Pastor Kim called and wished me happy anniversary on our 26th anniversary. Come on. <laughs> That's a joke. <laughs> um, I sat there and I reinvented myself. I watched, you know, he, even though he's doing things that Bishop Morton did years ago, mm -hmm. and God spoke to me. I went to Pastor Dane. I said, hey, I know you got a church, but only way I do this, you help me. And man, God has blessed us. I'm doing it. I'm doing it God's way, but I'm doing it the way God has spoken to me. I'm not trying to do it no other way. Yeah. I preach in my Jordans and my jeans. Yeah. Now I see other people preaching in Jordans and jeans. They talked about me. And uh, Pastor Jamal <laughs> Bryant said, man, put a suit on. I see him preaching all that. I'm calling right, you out. Right. 
I'm comfortable, and part of the success of celebration is being comfortable in who I am. Mm -hmm. And then delegation, that word is big for me. Yeah. Pastor Dana's the pastor. I'm the visionary. I did not I'm the, know that. No, she's the pastor. I'm the lead pastor. You gotta listen to terminology. Dana Barry, she's the executive pastor. She executes, uh -huh. like she's doing right now. Right, she's bossing the, everybody around right now, right. That's what she does. Right. And uh, I literally have seen the transition in the people because you know they want to hit. They're so used to the other system right. of just one voice. Yeah. Now you all been doing it like that for. We've been, I mean, I never forget. I went to Earl Polk's church and I saw seventy pastors, pastor over security, pastor over that. Right. Revolutionized my life years ago. So now I'm seeing that really come to pass, where I can sit back and say I want this and want that done. I preach. I enjoy preaching. Right. But and it looks like you're having so much fun. I'm watching you on social media. I am. You're dancing, shouting, I'm enjoying, and directing the choir. I'm doing having whatever. fun, can't laying sing hands. nowhere like you. I'm like Brista. I can't sing. <laughs> but Brista will try though. He'll try me too. <laughs> He'll try. I even get try the note wrong runs. and then mad at the people that's playing right. the note. Right. Tell me what y'all doing. Right. <laughs> you in the wrong key, buddy. No, you in the wrong key. <laughs> no, but he really can sing. But I'm, I'm at the bottom line to all that celebration church has become what it is because I have great team, I have great help, like the people that are here with me now. Yeah. It's so good to come to conferences here and you got people with you, your yeah. people. Cause you know, I've walked by myself so many years here mm -hmm. and uh, it's just great. I'm having a good time with it. You can I'm see enjoying it, it this time. You can see it, yeah. you can see it. It's no burdens. Bishop, man, you got a great story. We want you, we need to hear We're more. We're rapping, this is it? No, we, I got, leave me alone. <laughs> <laughs> How but you gonna close it? Uh, I want us to make sure that we, let people know we're at the Full Cops of Baptist Church Fellowship Conference here in Columbus, Ohio. Great preachers. Of course, Bishop Walker is going to minister, Todd Hall, John Hanna, Sammy Rodriguez, uh, our spiritual mother, Deborah Morton. Services for the youth, services for the young adults. All you need to do uh, is go to fullgospelconference.org. You can check out everything. Download our app. We'll give you all the information. They're streaming live also every night every night right here live uh, on the Word Network. Uh, we're just so happy to be here, Bishop. 855-730-WORD. Um, Whoa! Uh, Trying to take it, huh? <laughs> Let's the love live. Oh, boy. Let me this, see if you, you, you didn't ask me how can they find me. I was getting ready to say that. No, you wasn't. You I was. about to close it. No, I was got because I got you 30 seconds. You closed the interview and asked me, so uh, Bishop, where can we find you? Okay. I want that treatment too. Right. Okay. I ask everybody else. Bishop, where can we find you? At yet? Bishop Greg Davis on all social media. At, At Bishop, Bishop Greg, Davis. Greg Davis. Give me the same thing just because it's my show. I want to go. Go follow me. Get my books and products. I wrote 14 books. 14 books. You, didn't you can't go to heaven if you don't follow Bishop Greg Davis. <laughs> Thank you, Bishop, for the opportunity. This is the Bishop Greg Davis Show right here live in Columbus, Ohio, at the Full Gospel Baptist Church Fellowship Conference, the 25th year of this great conference. Uh, our founder, Bishop Paul S. Morton, and, of course, our presiding bishop, Bishop Joseph Warren Walker III. Uh, it's going to be a great, great week. Make sure you stay connected with us. With you are live, Davis. not the Lester Love Show, but on the Greg Davis Show. Much love to you, and we'll see you next time. Network special presentation brought to you by the friends and partners of the Word Network all over the world. For your love gift of $15 or more, the Word Network will send you this elegant silver crown necklace. This elaborate design is covered in sparkling rhinestones and hung on a beautiful link chain. Crowns are mentioned throughout the Bible network because of you were able to spread the gospel of Jesus Christ around the world. Inside, you exchange your dead sin. Gospel Truth with Andrew Womack on the Word Network. You're watching the largest African American religious network in the world. We are the Word Network. Coming up on Discovering the Jewish Jesus, learn the significance of Yom Truah, the Feast of Trumpets, and how it applies to your life today. Stay tuned for today's episode. Rabbi Schneider is a voice crying out in our lost world, pointing mankind to Jesus today.
Shalom. I'm Cynthia, Rabbi Schneider's wife. Thank you for joining us today. I truly believe that as you look up with a heart seeking to hear from and know God that you will receive today. God bless you in Shalom. Chavarim. Chavarim is the Hebrew word for friends. And God bless you in Shalom, beloved ones. My name is Rabbi K.A. Schneider. Welcome today to Discovering the Jewish Jesus. I'm excited to be getting into the Word of God with you and talking about today how God's fall holy days, described in the book of Leviticus,